Concerning self-defense, we must not mistake what Jesus taught about turning the other cheek with not defending oneself. Jesus said if someone knew at what hour the thief was going to come, he'd protect his house. And he also, at one place, although it had a spiritual meaning of the Old and New Testament, he said to take two swords. It's as the Lord leads in a given situation. It depends on the situation. Not turning the other cheek meant not returning evil for evil. It was not a polemic or a biblical injunction against self-defense. Now concerning martial arts, it becomes more problematic. As you say, what began or may have begun as a form of simple self-defense in Okinawa was hijacked by Eastern religion and the Australian monk. The Israelis have a form of self-defense called Krav Maga. Krav Maga. It uses many of the techniques employed in karate, somewhat judo, but certainly borrowing highly from karate and from Thai kickboxing and so on. But it is purely, purely a form of training for hand-to-hand -hand combat and self-defense. It's designed to fight when you're outnumbered and surrounded, based on the Israeli geo strategic situation of being surrounded by hostile Islamic neighbors and having to fight when you're outmanned against people who outnumber you and surround you. Well, the Israeli martial arts of an individual is based on the same premise, how to fight multiple opponents when you're surrounded. There's more of them than you and when they're bigger than you are. Uh, but it has nothing to do with meditation or with Eastern religion. If self-defense can be separated from the meditative practices and the bowing associated with martial arts in, in, in the Far East, from where I just returned. Things like Taekwondo and so forth, or Tai Chi. If you can remove the simple self-defense aspects of those things from the Eastern religious mysticism, there is not a problem with them. I see people out in Hong Kong doing something called Falun Gong. It's cultic and mystical, illegal in China. But you also see people in China out on the pavement in the morning doing Taekwondo. It looks like a ballet dance. It's hard to believe it's a martial art. But they're doing it more for meditative purposes, obviously, than they are self-defense purposes. It takes on a religious or quasi-religious property to it. Christians need to avoid those things. There is a demonic spirit on back of those things. There are some things that take place in the martial arts that can only be attributed to an occult spirit, to a familiar spirit. And Christians need to avoid those things. If a Christian was going to practice a martial art, I would practice one that has no origins in Eastern religion or that was never hijacked by Eastern religion. Most notably, Krav Maga. Krav Maga is very effective in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In fact, it can be quite deadly. Um, not that we're looking to kill people, but self-defense is not something that Jesus in any way taught against. But this religious aspect, with the bowing and the meditation that you see integrated into Taekwondo and into Kung Fu and into the other, many of the other Eastern martial art forms, Christians should not be involved in those things. They should not be involved in those things at all. You also see in China people, I was just in Chongqing the week before last, working with, with well, anyway, local believers, and uh, you see them doing Tai Chi, even elderly people doing it. Now, obviously, it has a strong occult association, even though in the West such things are associated more with the martial arts. This is different than yoga. Yoga always had to do with yoking with the yogi. It always had to do with Hinduism and Eastern religious meditation. Yoga was inherently wrong from the beginning, and no Christian in their right mind should practice yoga. Now, stretching exercises are fine, but you don't need Eastern religion and yoga to do that. Yoga is absolutely wrong. Let's go just a little bit further with this. I was in Bad Ning, China one time, some years ago, up by the Great Wall, and there were Westerners going up there to an uh, acupuncture clinic, 
when you see where acupuncture came from and you see what it really is, it's not the sanitized version we see in the West. People were buying tablespoons, Westerners, tablespoons of a kind of wine from a jar with six poisoned species of dead snakes in it and the toxins slowly secreting from the slip underhead area of the serpents into this white wine that was somehow fermented with the snake toxins in it and they were sipping it as an aphrodisiac. You see that acupuncture evolves directly from yin yang, from Taoism. Now if you can look at sympathetic ganglia, if you can look at the peripheral nervous system, the paras parasympathetic nervous system and just look at it and see concentrations of sympathetic ganglia where insertions take place or where acupressure takes place, you can separate the occult properties of Chinese traditional medicine from that which is legitimately and physiologically sustainable. Let's not forget that modern medical science and pharmacology separated from the healing arts of folk medicine and superstition. Uh, because something was also practiced in the world of superstition does not mean that it does not necessarily have a legitimate scientific basis. The quest is always to take that which is scientific and separate it from its superstitious origins, unpackage it and take it away from the false religious beliefs and the occult practices. These things are obviously wrong, quite wrong. Taoism is obviously quite wrong. Traditional Chinese medicine is quite wrong. But there may be elements of it that have a legitimate anatomical basis if they can be totally separated from it. That would be true in martial arts as well. It is not, however, true in yoga. It is not, however, true in yoga. Stretching exercises existed in other civilizations prior to yoga, and we don't need anything to do with yoga, which is meditative and always based on a relationship with the yogi. Yoga is inherently demonic. Martial arts have become that, but can be extricated from its pagan and occult practices, as can uh, possibly acupressure. But we cannot argue that about yoga. The principal idea is to be separated from Eastern religious idolatry, superstition, and occult practices. There is a demonic spirit in those things, and practices of Eastern medicine and of martial arts, if not extricated, can lead us into league with something that is demonically influenced. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Jacob, Jacob uh, one follow-up question. Uh, bowing in, in Eastern culture is almost like a handshake, but you should never bow before a master's picture. Is there uh, bowing to show a sign of respect? Is that wrong? As a cultural nuance in the West, we can make that argument. The problem is in Hinduism, the bow takes this shape and going like this, and they say namaste. The God and me, meaning Rama, Sitra, Vishnu, bows to the God and you. It has that connotation. Again, Christians should extricate any cultural practice or nuance from anything that has a demonic or pagan or idolatrous association. 